I have two friends that I connect with every couple of weeks, and we share things that we learn in our own New Testament translation work. The last time we got together, uh, one of my friends said, why is the English word Jerusalem sometimes expressed by the plural neuter Greek word Yerosalema, and other times by the indeclinable feminine singular Jerusalem? Well, I thought this was an excellent question, and I had no idea what the answer might be. Now, I'd been exploring Perplexity AI as an alternative search engine to Google, a way of avoiding all those ads, and I wondered if Perplexity might speak Koine Greek, and indeed it does. So when I asked this question of Perplexity, it said, well, yes, we do have multiple forms of the word in the New Testament, and here are my suggestions for why we have reasons for the different forms. This is what I can say about the neuter plural. Here's what I can say about the feminine singular. There's a little bit of interesting grammar here. And here are some possible explanations I have. And here are some follow-up questions that you might want to ask about this. Well, I got so impressed with this, I wondered, are there other AIs out there that could also be helpful? So I asked Perplexity who its main competitors were, and it said Cloud.ai, C-L-A-U-D-E, Gemini from Google, U.com, Copilot from Microsoft, and ChatGPT. Now, ChatGPT is totally hopeless. When I asked it to uh, look into the patterns or why these words appeared in different forms, it said, well, you know, there could be variations in the manuscripts or scribal errors, and we know that's not true. We know a lot about textual variants, but they never occur on different forms of the word Jerusalem. The second thing it said was differences in translation or interpretation by later translators could play a role in this. And even though this sentence has good, is grammatically constructed, the meaning of the sentence is simply nuts. So uh, chat GPT has no idea, it does not speak Koine Greek, and trying to ask it questions is a waste of time as pertains to New Testament studies. Perplexity, however, was helpful. Uh, the, another even more helpful uh, AI tool was Clo. Uh, when I asked it, it said, yeah, we've got the singular and plural. The singular form is a direct transliteration of the Hebrew word for Jerusalem. Uh, the plural form is a Hellenized version would sound more natural in Greek and make more sense when addressed to a Greek-speaking audience. And there are some author preferences. Luke uses the singular form more often than his gospel. John frequently uses the plural. This led me to several follow-up questions, but I don't have time to develop those with you right now. But very interesting, and Claude did help me follow up on that. Uh, Gemini from uh, the Google company, not very helpful, pretty thin, uh, really no insight. Uh, they try to answer, but they don't come up with much. U.com is about the same as Gemini. Copilot, uh, really totally unhelpful. It doesn't lie the way chat GPT does, but it says uh, the use of these different forms can depend on the context and the specific grammatical needs of the sentence, but then doesn't tell me about how the context might vary or what those specific grammatical needs might be. So here's Bob's review of AI in October of 2024. Claude, when it comes to translating the New Testament, is an excellent resource to get into. Perplexity is not as good as Claude, but it's good. Gemini is weak, U.com is weak, Copilot is even weaker, and ChatGPT is the 14-year-old adolescent of the AIs. It's completely ignorant of Greek and lies about it rather than admitting that it doesn't know. Uh, I have found that there are better ways to address a question and worse ways to address a question uh, to Claude. Uh, so if you just ask just the bare bones question, Claude, to its credit, will often say, hmm, I don't really have enough context here to answer this question. 
So I have found that I get the best results when I give Claude a new a context. I tell it that my question is related to the Greek New Testament from 1 Thessalonians, and here's the bulk of the sentence that wraps around my problem phrase, and then I ask my question. Now, uh, before I tried Claude on this, I was trying to translate this, and it seemed to me that uh, FP should have some sort of time-related component. Uh, felt like from the context, that was what was called for, but frankly, I couldn't remember having run into that usage for FP. I went to uh, BDAG, and there are one, two, three, four, five pages of small print outlining possible ways that FP could be used. And on the fifth page, in uh, major unit number 18, it does say that it can be used depending on the context, as a marker of temporal associations in the time of or at or the time within which an event occurs. So I said to myself, aha, that makes sense in the context of First Thessalonians chapter 1. And then I asked, oh, let's get this shared again. I asked the question of Claude, and it took me 10 minutes to work through BDAG. In 10 seconds, uh, Claude gave a whole treatment and then said, here is what I think. Number one, this has got a temporal aspect. And I thought, wow, 10 minutes in BDAG on my own or 10 seconds with Claude. Uh, it also has some comments on idiomatic use and theological consistency. I'm very impressed with how both Claude and uh, perplexity do pay attention to the context of the New Testament, context of the individual biblical book and the rest of the New Testament generally. Um, I asked Lode, uh based on how impressed I was with them, uh, whether it had the whole New Testament memorized. Oh, the other thing that, uh, oh yeah, I asked if it had the whole New Testament memorized or if it translated on the fly. And what Claude said was, when you ask a question, I don't have it all memorized, nor do I translate it on the fly, but I apply my knowledge of Greek grammar, vocabulary, and I analyze the structure, forms, and syntax of the verse, and I consider the broader context of the passage. To be honest, I'm not sure what the difference is between this and translating. It seems to me this is what I try to do, uh, make use of my knowledge of vocabulary and grammar, analyze the structure, forms, and syntax, and fit it into the context. The other thing Claude says, and this is quite different from chat GPT, if I'm unsure about a particular detail of the verse, uh, I'll acknowledge this and provide the best analysis I can based on the information at hand. Uh, you can get a free account in Claude, if you don't use it often, you're allowed roughly 45 questions every five hours. If you make heavier use of it than that, you'll want to pay the $28 a month for a pro account.